All right, guys, welcome to this um, tutorial. So in this particular um, YouTube video, right, we're going to be talking about how to frame trade ideas um, that are low risk and high probable. So when we define low risk, we're referring to trade ideas that um, you are not risking so much, right, compared to your profit targets, all right? So it's not like you're taking um, trades that you're risking 50 pips or 100 pips or 1,000 pips to make a little fraction, right? So this kind of trades, believe me, they take a lot of time and they are frustrating, right? So you want to be trading, um, you want to be taking trades that have very low risk and high reward potential. So that's what I mean by low risk, meaning that you can be taking trades and risking as little as five pips, 10 pips, 30 pips, and all of that, right? As a personal rule, I don't use more than 30 pips as my stop loss. So my maximum stop loss is 30 pips. That is why I like to use low risk, high probability trade setups. Now, when it, with regards to high probability, we mean that the trades have a likelihood of panning out, right? Meaning that out of maybe 10 chances, they have you no know, five, six, seven, eight um, chances of playing out, right? So that's what makes it high probability, right? It's not like it's 100% trade or 100% accurate or without um, without a uh, you know mistake without losses no there is no trading system without losses you're going to encounter losses no matter how good your trade setup is all right so now when you have understood that you cannot be able to frame low risk high probability trade setup so you're looking for trade ideas that give that offers a low risk and offer you high reward potentials and also has a more likelihood of panning out this is what we call low risk, high probability trade setups, right? So now, the next thing you should know that we have to know what makes these setups ideal. What makes it ideal? Why do you want to take these trade setups? Number one, they have higher time frame sponsorship, meaning that they are in line with the bigger time frame. And if you're a student of mine, you would know that I always preach against the idea of trying to buy to sell, sell to buy, no you are only trading in line with the higher time frame because the higher time frame can only have one bias. If it's bullish, then it's bullish. If it's bearish, then it's bearish. If it's ranging or consolidating, then it's consolidating. So you cannot have two different biases on one particular higher time frame, right? So you're looking at trade ideas that have higher time frame sponsorship, right? And those are the kind of trades you want to be taking out that are low risk and high probable. So now, smart money frame trade stops based on the daily the weekly and the monthly levels, all right? So smart money is not looking at 15 minutes charts. Uh, who are, how, uh, when I refer to smart money, I'm referring to the banks, the central banks, I'm referring to the investment banks, I'm referring to the big entities, the deep pockets, the hedge funds, the big companies, right? The JP Morgans, you know, the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, all those are, those are guys, all those called the smart money. They're the big guys, the big dogs, the guys that have the money to move price in whatever direction that they please, all right? So, they are they usually frame their trade ideas on the bigger time frame because they are planning to hold their trades for you know weeks to months. So they're not trying to catch 15 minutes, 20 pips trades. No, that is not what smart money is trying to do. Trying to get trades that can make them a lot of money, right? They want trades that can they can give them like maybe 500 pips, um, you know, 1,000 pips, those kind of big trades. So what, what are they looking out for, right? They're looking out for trade ideas that can give them those big money, right? Those big returns. Right, to give to the investors and all of that. So that is what they are doing. So you want to be doing what the big dogs are doing, right? So you don't want to be like that um, sheep that is trying to sail against the wind because it's going to be, it's going to do what gets shipwrecked. You want to be moving in line with what the trend, in line with what the, the wind, right? So that being said, the next thing must know that makes it ideal is that you have to wait for price to get to this higher time frame level. So it's ideal to wait for um price to get to these higher time frame levels. All right. So you're not trying to buy to sell or sell to buy. If the market is bullish, they wait for price to get to that bullish um key level and then you strike. All right. So it's a one strike thing. Now uh one beautiful thing about this kind of setups is that they take time to form. All right. So that means you know imagine a daily chance coming to form a lower high or a lower, or lower low. Or a low, a higher low, or a higher high. It takes time to form, giving you what ample opportunity to get involved. Right? It gives you, even if you miss the first entry, you will still get another entry. If you miss the second entry, you will still get an entry. So it gives you enough time to scale into the trade. All right? That's why they're ideal. They are take time to form. 
right? So you give enough time to plan. You give enough time to you know measure your your profits to get um to analyze to get involved to do your proper stock placements and to do all that. So this is enough time to plan. That's why they are very ideal. All right. So now the next thing you must know about this is that um, what is expected of the trader. So you're the one using the setups, right? So you're the one that's using these trade setups. What is expected of you? What should you be doing with this knowledge I'm going to be giving you guys? Because we're going to the live chat after this. So what should you be doing after all this? What should you be doing after I teach you all this? So these are the steps you have to follow. Number one, you want to mark out the key levels. And for the purpose of this lecture, we'll be using only imbalances and other blocks. Those are the only things we'll be using for this call. I'm not talking about breakout blocks. I'm not talking about um, um, key, um, supply and demand, nothing out of the extraordinary, apart from imbalance and other blocks. Those are the only things that you're looking at for on the high level. Those are, those are your key levels, all right? So the next thing I want to be looking at for is the refinement of these levels to a lower time. That means when you mark out the key levels on the high time frame, you simply will draw it forward in time to the lower time frame, right? I'll show you guys a live example. So when you refine to the lower time frame, that is where you're striking. You're not striking on the high time frame, right? You are striking on the lower time frame. So you mark out these levels, then you now um, mark it to the to the future or the present time. And then you look for these key levels for price to get there. And then there was, you wait for what the next thing, which is what the time of the day. So this is um, for those of you that are intraday traders. So if you like um, the idea of holding trades, maybe two hours or one hour or 15 minutes, you know, you want to be waiting for kill zones because kill zones are usually a three hour windows when trade setups form, right? So if you prefer using, um, like me, I use this a lot. So if you are intraday today, like to you like to trade for a short period. So you can also for the kill zones, and I've done videos exclusively on kill zones, right? Especially the London kill zone. So it's actually on this YouTube channel. So you can always look for it. Just type in ICT London kill zone, Elon FS Academy. You're going to see it there, right? So if you're not an intraday today, you can, you can skip this level, this step, right? Or and go to the next step, which is what you wait for what a structural sheet. So when price gets to the mark level, which is either the, in the imbalance or the other block, then you wait for the structural shifts. You want the market to give you what? A telltale sign that was, it is ready to move, right? You want to see that confirmation on the lower time frame. Market is ready to what? It's ready to move. So you go to the lower time frame, you find the lower time frame, you wait for price to get there, and then wait for what? A confirmation. That is, these are the steps on how to do this appropriately, all right? So now, um, before we head over to Richards, we have um, a top-down approach or A to Z uh, methodology for this concept, right? I go in details how to use this concept in the paid mentorship group. So if you want to join the paid mentorship group, it has, we, we, um, unlike other academies where they have um, monthly subscriptions, we go by yearly subscription, giving you enough time to learn, enough time to save up for the next year. And that is how we do it. We don't do monthly because I don't think that it's wise for a trader to be learning and still paying monthly because um, it's going to be under pressure, right? You're trying to learn, you're trying to make money, you're still trying to raise money for the next month. It doesn't make any sense to me. So we opted for what the yearly subscription, right? That's why the fee is a bit high, but it's not too expensive. Just 45,000 Naira only for one full year, giving you enough time to understand the concepts, to learn and enough time to go through all our materials and another time to back test. So it's a yearly subscription and it goes for 45,000 naira only, which is approximately about you know, 50 to um, $60. All right. So you can use the link in the description to join immediately, right? Just click on the link, register at once, and then you get uh, added up to our paid mentorship platform, right? So now let's go to the real charts for proper examples. So these are the live examples, right? In the next um, slide, right? So. Um, I want you to take notes of these life examples and um, have fun. And I want to use Bitcoin to give an example. Right? So now we can see that um, the Bitcoin has been breaking lows. So this Bitcoin broke this low. Let us um, point that out. So that Bitcoin broke this low, right? It broke a low here, broke another low, right? So we are having a kind of a bearish structure, right? Market took out this low, took out this low. So when you see market breaking lows, I'm making lower highs. It's an indication that price was 
bearish right so now no matter we're looking at only two levels and we're using the daily and the high time frame to define this level right so now we have this other block on the higher time frame right the daily time frame we have what this other block this last up candle. so you can simply mark from the open of the candle to the top of the whole move right so we have that other block right now is it ideal to be looking for let us assume that uh, you want to take this shot right is it ideal to just take your cell at this point here and then put the stop loss all the way here? I know that usually you're targeting was this low for your, for your take profit, this low right here. That should be your first take profit, right? That should have been your first take profit. This low right here. Oh no, it should be this low because markets, okay? This low should have been your, your, your take profit because markets made this low then came back before selling down, right? Is it wise to be taking this kind of trade? That's your risking. It's not even up to one to two. Just look at just one to one. There's no sense in risking this much on your trade, right? There's no sense or there's no point in doing this. So this is where lower time frame comes into play. So now you refine the other block on the higher time frame, and then you transpose those levels to a lower time. So you can mark what's the open of the candle, the open of the other block, and we mark uh, the the day we are looking at for what's the entry. So it was also inside this candle. We got the entry right, so we saw the market make this high, made this low. And note that this took out liquidity, right? This took out liquidity before it was breaking towards the downside, making this was a very high probability was trade setup. All right, so that makes it a very high probability trade setup. All right, so now we are looking at this point, the market. Um, came into this point, and then we're looking at for how we have made our lower time. So we have transposed the level we're looking at the other block, and then we head over to a lower time. Frame. So go to the 30 minutes chart, right? All right, so um, okay. So let me take this. Oh, this is for my Q zones I use to mark Q zones, right? But let us go to the other point. So now price um broke, so market are coming back there. We're not trying to buy this notes because if imagine you try to buy this, they have got was liquidated on this. That's why I said you should wait for market to come. So the area you're looking out for. So what happened here? Market came. So that other block you're looking at, um, that was on the um, 6th of June. We were waiting for market. Markets got there. Okay. Now we are waiting for what? The break of structure. All right. So what do we do? We have it here. So so market make a high, a low, and then a high before then what's breaking to the downside, right? So this is where we had was our break of structure. It was here. We had our break of structure on this particular area. So this was the last three up candles. So if you want to play this, just to be very easy. You just simply mark this last three candles. That would have been your entry and stop loss above that high. So just simply mark the last other block. I feel that other blocks are not necessarily the last candle, right? In this scenario, we saw these three impulsive candles, right? So this, since this is a lower time frame, we just why you just play the open of it and then um you mark the high. And also, also had this breaker block here. I have this last down candle before it. The Judas swing. So I had a breakout block aligning with what the uh last up move before the break of trade. So that would have been your entry. So that's when we got involved there. Now you're seeing how you have refined your stop loss and made it tighter than you should have been. So you have what your cell here. So you guys see the difference. And instead of placing your 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 stop loss or that overall high, imagine instead of placing stop loss all the way up here, right? You can see how we have refined our stop loss. All the way to what down to this lower time frame high, all right? So we have refined our surplus to this lower time frame high. Now you can see that look at that, that target we are targeting there. So we have seen that in this trade alone, we have made an amazing or whooping one is to 3.2. So you can see that how this is done. You mark the higher time frame levels and transpose it to the lower time frame, and then wait for price to come there, giving you what is structural confirmation before they was going short or long, depending on. And you can assume that the market actually took some time. It took some time before it got there. This is why I don't really like Bitcoin. Bitcoin does not really give me dynamic moves, right? I love it's not really dynamic. This one takes time to move, right? So we have had to endure all this. For the market fire came to what our take profits, right? Markets hit TP somewhere around it, right? So we have had to endure all of this, right? And if you're a lower time today, you have still been catching more entries. The market is you no. Know, some of you have still gotten involved lower than this, right? So this would have been this is I'm just giving you guys the best case scenario. This would have been the best entry. This was very very one of the entry entries very close to the other block, not far from it. But if you if 
maybe did not get involved there, you have still gone below. But for me, this will be the best entrance. Stop, just maybe as when one is to two, you take past shots and then you hold for this take for this. So this took about, let's see how long this took. This took about um this took about three days and 15 hours, right? To get there. So this is how you you have made an amazing three is to two point one. That would have been um how would have played this, right? So now we have talked about this. Let's check another example, and we're going to be using an imbalance example for this discussion, all right? So now looking at the USD chef, all right, USD chef. So if you check the weekly time frame, remember I told you guys weekly, daily, and month time frame. So on the weekly time frame, we have what this other block, this weekly other block, right? That's why price is raising up. All right, so if you mark the open, this is the weekly order block, this last down push before what the run up. So we had this weekly order block. So if you transpose that level to the daily time frame, we saw that market you know, came to that place, you know, that weekly order block, measured by was this purple line. So some markets, you know, playing around, finally markets broke this daily high, giving us what a market structure shift. So we have got, gotten some buyers involved there, but I'm looking at what an imbalance scenario, right? So look at that imbalance scenario. So now look at this market. Based on the current range, we had what from swing high to swing below. I had a swing high and this dynamic swing low. Why is it swing low? Because it's the lowest low before what this impulsive rally, and this is the um, highest point before what the retracement, right? So this is my swing high, and that's my swing low. All right. So now do we have an imbalance there. Yes, we had an imbalance just inside here. All right. So we had an imbalance just below here, right? that would have been a very nice opportunity. So that was the imbalance um, trade setup on the daily time frame. So now we can transpose this towards the lower time frame, right? So we're going to look at this particular day, and then we go to what the 15 minutes charts. All right, so now on the 15 minutes, you can see um, that imbalance. Look at that imbalance now. You can see time of the day. This actually happened during the kill zone hour, right? So this is actually my London kill zone, which is 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. So market this buy actually started around kill zone. So I was I actually caused this trade. I actually caused this particular trade. All right, I actually caused this particular trade, and it's actually visible on my Telegram community. So if you, you can check my Telegram to confirm if I actually caught it right. So the market was um the market came below Asian lows and the previous days low, right? And then gave us was a bullish confirmation. So using the 15 minutes chart. Maybe you didn't have got an entry inside there. I'll show you guys how we have got an entry inside the five minutes, right? But based on the 15 minutes chart, I was also an entry on the five minutes here. But let's look at the 15 minutes first, right? Even if you didn't catch this entry lower, this lower entry here, now of course, look at it. There was actually what a structural shift. When the market broke this high, there was what a structural shift, right? So if you caught your, if you played this, right, that would have been your break of structure, right? And the market came down to this lower imbalance. So that is, and the touch of this imbalance just right here. Market kind of hits that imbalance on the lower time frame before they was going here. So that um, structural shift, market came to the imbalance, hit it and then it's really up, right? We also had another entry here. The market created this other block. So the market hit this other block, right? Made, the market made a new high, hit this other block and then it ran away. So even if you didn't get involved at this imbalance, you have been your second entry on this and then you have gotten, say, you have gotten your rally to the upside, right? Now let's look at this particular earlier entry, right? What if we didn't catch this 15 minutes? Chance? What would we have done inside this five minutes area? Let's go to the five minutes area. Look at what this lower entry, right? Remember that this is how to refine your risk and make the most of your trade setup. So looking at the five minutes chart, it's very, very obvious now. Number one, price took out what this age, this um Asian low took out the previous daily low. So we had the market take out um previous daily low in the new day swept this liquidity there and then we had what a structural shift in the five minutes time frame so where is the structural shift just right here so can see markets look at this look at this the market made it here a low look at how the market violated this other block very clearly so markets violated this last down candle you can see this strong violation of this last down candle before markets came back to retest it so this would have been the optimal entry for me and that's why i actually caused my trade if you check my telegram community that is why I got involved in the trade, right? I got involved here. My stop loss was just below. And you could have seen that you have made what? A whooping one is to, how many did this give? Let's see how much this gave. This gave by whooping one is to, one is to five, right? One is to five, that's what this market gave, right? One is to five. So 
that would have been it. For me, I would have I would have been targeting this. I was targeting I think this was what I was targeting this higher. So this because this is a little bit equal highs here. So from there up to this high would have been one is to three point three five. Um, this old high here would have been one is to one is to one point two. So this would have been a better place for take profit. This relatively quiet. You can see these devils here. This liquidity resting here. That would have been a very nice little TP. One is to three point three one and if I gave them an amazing one is to five. It even gave more than that, right? So I'm yeah, taking patches along the way. So you can see the market came all the way there. This would be one is to seven, right? So you are seeing how this is how to this is how to refine your trade setups from the higher time frame levels to the lower time frame levels, giving you what the high the low risk, high probability, high reward trade setup, right? So if you want to join our paid mentorship, where we discuss more of this in detail, because I just thought you guys just um two things, right? Just in balance. We have a, a plethora of information in our paid group, right? So you can always do how to send me a DM or use the link in the description to join immediately. So you can simply click the link in the description to join immediately, right? So just once you pay up, you take your right to where you will be getting involved in those, right? So it's goes for a one-time fee of 45000 naira for a full year, uh, which is um, approximately about uh, 58 or $60 in, in the um, dollar rate or dollar conversion rate, right? So if you want to be part of a paid ownership, you want to join. I hope this video was insightful. So see you guys in the next video.